I will do the um, the notices. We we have a busy social calendar this week because there's something on Zoom on Monday, on Wednesday, and on Friday. And on Monday tomorrow, it's the um, church council meeting on Zoom, and um, it's at seven thirty p.m. And on Wednesday, some of us meet for prayer at eight o'clock, and that's on Zoom. And you're very welcome. And on Friday, I have a more complicated notice from Mike. The, um, the fundraising quiz are doing, an, a team are doing another quiz night on Friday um, on the 8th. Proceeds from the donations to be shared between Methodist homes and the church. You can have teams of up to four and you can join a team on the night and details are on the website or from either Mike and Elspeth or Tom and Carol. And I'd also like to welcome Helen, but first of all, I'll pray. Our Father God, on this first Sunday of 2021, a year we are greeting with both hope and trepidation, please fill us with your love and renew our trust in you as we share in the covenant service. Please be with Helen and speak through her. And bless all those at home who cannot do Zoom and now cannot go to a service in the church building. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Over to Helen. Thank you, Penny. Our call to worship today is from a prayer by Matthew Henry, who lived an awfully long time ago. And this is what he prayed. Gracious God, let the light of your face shine upon us. Your peace rule in our hearts and your strength be our song. By the gift of your grace, let us take up the cross and follow in the steps of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. I was looking for a New Year hymn to start us off and the, the golden oldies from the hymn book, I couldn't find a, a good um, broadcast of them. So uh, we've chosen this particular golden oldie for us today. and a prayer of adoration and confession. Gracious God, on this day, I and many others seek to renew our covenant with you. Your love is strong and faithful. You never stop loving us. Our love for you is weak and fickle and we often fall short of what we have committed ourselves to be and do. Forgive us for our reluctance to follow Christ, our half-hearted worship, our failures in caring, service and witness, and our unwillingness to challenge injustice. Have mercy on us, O God, and renew in us both the desire and the ability to be people of love. Thank you for your gracious words. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. One of our Bible readings this Sunday that Margaret's going to share with us in a few minutes is the story of these three characters. It's probably a bit difficult for you to see them. They're part of um, the characters from the, the Nativity, if you've seen um, parts of the Nativity. And uh, I wonder if you recognise who they are. Difficult. 
there. It's the wise men. Sometimes we call them the three kings, sometimes we call them the magi, if we're feeling particularly intellectual. <laughs> we think of three people, although of course it may not have been three people, because the Bible doesn't mention a number of people, just a number of gifts that were given to Jesus at the time of his birth. I don't know what you had for Christmas, but I wonder about the impact of those gifts through the year. Will they be things that you um, keep for a short time and then uh, discard, like food or drink? Will they be things that you will keep for a very long time and treasure? because of perhaps the person who gave them to you or the the gift itself a few years ago i was given this cup which i thought was really lovely and the contents were hot chocolate with marshmallows which of course were even lovelier than the cup itself and it's it's a snow scene on it um houses with lights shining out of the windows and it's all covered in snow so it's something that i particularly use during the winter and i always think about the hot chocolate that it once contained and i i wouldn't want to get rid of it because i think it's lovely and it makes me think too about the person who gave it to me and how thoughtful they were i wonder if that's how you feel about some of your Christmas presents that you received a short time ago. Sometimes we get presents that are most inappropriate, don't we? I will always remember my aunt giving me a canary yellow polo necked jumper one year and being absolutely horrified by the thought of ever wearing it. And I don't think that I ever did. But we need to search not just for the value of the gift and cherish it according to how much it was worth or what it was, but the intention behind the gift and what people um, felt about us as they wanted to offer us something that we might enjoy, whether we actually did or not. I wonder about the gifts that you had and where they will be this time next year. We too have gifts, of course, that we give to people. Probably some of those that I give have been wildly inappropriate at times and people have thought, what on earth was she thinking? And maybe they have really cherished some of the things that I have offered to them. And today in our covenant service, we will be making an offering to God. We will be saying words to God if we feel that we can say them, which talk of giving ourselves to God. Knowing what God thinks of people, I'm sure that that isn't an inappropriate gift at all, but something that he cherishes from each of us. Perhaps as we share these words later we will think about not just what we are offering but how but what god feels about how we offer ourselves to him and how he can take us and value us and use us because of what he thinks of us after all he sent jesus for us <coughs> Now Margaret's going to share our Bible readings for today. The Old Testament lesson is from Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 7 to 14. The joyful return of the exiles. The Lord says, sing with joy for Israel, the greatest of the nations. Sing your song of praise. The Lord has saved his people. He has rescued all who are left. 
I will bring them from the north and gather them from the ends of the earth. The blind and the lame will come with them, pregnant women than those about to give birth. They will come back a great nation. My people will return weeping, praying as I lead them back. I will lead them to streams of water on a smooth road where they will not stumble. I am like a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my eldest son. The Lord says, Nations, listen to me, and proclaim my world, words on the far-off shores. I scattered my people, but I will gather them and guard them as a shepherd guards his flock. I have set Israel's people free and saved them from a mighty nation. They will come and sing for joy on Mount Zion and be delighted with my gifts, gifts of corn and wine and olive oil, gifts of sheep and cattle. They will be like a well-watered garden. They will have everything they need. Then the girls will dance and be happy, and men, young and old, will rejoice. I will comfort them and turn their mourning into joy, their sorrow into gladness. I will fill the priests with the richest food and satisfy all the needs of my people. I, the Lord, have spoken. The New Testament lesson is from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. The visit of the wise men. Jesus was born in the town of Bethlehem in Judea during the time when Herod was king. Soon afterwards, some men who studied the stars came from the east to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the baby born to be king of the Jews? We saw his star when it came up in the east, and we have come to worship him. When King Herod heard about this, he was very upset, and so was everyone else in Jerusalem. He called together all the chief priests and the teachers of the law and asked them, Where will the Messiah be born? In the town of Bethlehem in Judea, they answered, for this is what the prophet wrote. Bethlehem in the land of Judah, you are by no means the least of the leading cities of Judah, for from you, you will come a leader who will guide my people Israel. So Herod called the visitors from the east to a secret meeting and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem with these instructions. Go and make a careful search for the child, and when you find him, let me know, so that I too may go and worship him. And so they left, they left, and on their way they saw the same star they had seen in the east. When they saw it, how happy they were, what joy was theirs. It went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. They went into the house, and when they saw the child with his mother Mary, they knelt down and worshipped him. They brought out their gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh and presented them to him. Then they returned to their country by another road, since God had warned them in a dream not to go back to Herod. Amen. Thank you, Margaret. I was looking for a picture that might describe the return of people. And uh, I found this one, which I thought was a great picture of people having a focal point of being together, of being able to gather in a town square. 
and that's perhaps something that we will look forward to doing in the next however many months that it might be. I wonder what gifts you had for Christmas. When you get to a certain age, like Julian and me, it seems to be mainly food and drink, which is what made me uh, laugh about um, that reading from Jeremiah that Margaret just shared about the priests having the rich food. We seem to have been given far more than is good for us, especially when no one's allowed to come into the house to share them with us. Watch out for the elastic waistbands when I see you again, folks. I guess people want us to be sustained for future days, or at least I hope that's the reason. I also was given this wall plaque from Julian, which reads, be still and know that I am God. It's a text from Psalm 46, and it'll hang on the wall above my computer screen. It's the sort of text which, when I look at it, it makes my shoulders go down and relieves the tension. Because if God is God, then I don't have to be. I don't have to claim to know all the answers. I don't have to think that I'm in control or that I've made anything perfectly, because that's jo God's job, not mine. Our Old Testament reading for today is from the prophet of Jeremiah. Now, he was writing at a time when the whole nation had been conquered by the Babylonians and most of the population had been taken into exile. The rich were gone, the influential were gone, the king was gone, and a lot of Jerusalem was obliterated. Only the poor and powerless were left behind. The exile was to last 70 years. And in the passage we hear today, Jeremiah waxes lyrical about a return. It sounds great, doesn't it? There's quite a party atmosphere, isn't there, in the way he writes. People are coming, he says, from the four corners of the earth. Everyone is included and there will be dancing, mourning turned into joy, etc. And the priests given their fill of rich food. Woo! Sounds a bit like Christmas. It's a picture of joy, a picture of the kingdom of heaven and everyone is included. I wonder if that's how we're looking forward to our return to living after coronavirus is brought under control. I hope there will be a party and that everyone will feel part of it, that no one will be left out. Jeremiah is also the prophet whose most famous quotation is probably, I will give you a hope and a future which is a couple of chapters previous, chapter 29, verse 11. I feel as though those things are on the way. When I heard a couple of days ago about people from our church who were having their first inoculations for COVID-19, how wonderful it will be when we can get together once more and not be frightened about what we may or may not be carrying or um, be catching. Our second reading was from Matthew's Gospel about the visit of those wise men. We hadn't heard this particular reading from the Bible this season so I thought I'd use it today. Of course it's very familiar to us from carols and Christmas cards etc. But perhaps something we don't usually make so much of is that these were not the local people they were from far away. They were not from Israel or Judah, but from the east. And that's as much as we know. We don't know quite how far they had to travel. All we know is that they were people who were considered wise and they watched the stars. We assume they were rich 
because they were able to leave their usual places for a considerable time and journey and bring extravagant gifts. But look at this, at the very beginning of the life of Jesus Christ, while still a baby in a Jewish city, people from other places and other religions were drawn to worship him and offer him precious gifts. We know from later parts of the gospel story that during Jesus' ministry, other people were always being drawn to him to worship him and that lives were changed utterly by contact with him. And that is what we proclaim, that people are still drawn to worship him, that Jesus was God, that Jesus is still God. Whether people are returning from an exile and planning a great party, and that could be us in a few months' time, when we're actually able to greet one another and sing and dance if we feel so inclined. Or whether people are arriving from a different culture and by a completely different route, perhaps coming to believe for the very first time, they are still welcome. And I hope that we would greet them with open arms. Today we come before God to say the words of our covenant together, a service which Methodists have always shared once a year. Awesome words which we may find difficult or even impossible to say, but yet are a part traditionally of Methodist worship, a part of our remembering just who and what God is. I hope that as well as the solemnity of these words, today we'll take some time to remember the call of God to those exiles and how their return was marked with such celebration and worship and that our return might be similarly marked. I've been given a, a big box from Robert with cards about the Methodist way of life, well, little leaflets actually, and I'm going to post them on to you all, along with membership cards. I hope you'll take some time to read them. And I'm hoping that perhaps we'll have a series of Bible studies to look different, to look deeper into what makes a Methodist a Methodist. The four subsections are quite familiar to you from your membership cards from the last few years. They're about worship, about learning and caring, about service and evangelism. Worship reminds us to pray every day, to worship together regularly, to read our Bibles and look and listen for God in scripture. The learning and caring is caring for ourselves and those around us learning more about our faith, practicing hospitality and generosity. The service bit is about helping people in our communities and beyond, caring for creation and God's gifts and challenging injustice. And the last bit is evangelism, speaking of the love of God, living in a way that draws others to Jesus and sharing our faith. Things to ponder for the new year, when you're sitting in front of the fire with your feet up, wondering what to read, have a little read of this and think about what it says. And so we come to the point where we have our covenant together. I'll read the part of the covenant service and then our next slide will be the um, prayer that we share. So we stop for a moment and think and prepare ourselves to hear and to speak these words.
sisters and brothers in Christ. Let us again accept our place within this covenant, which God has made with us and with all who are called to be Christ's disciples. This means that by the help of the Holy Spirit, we accept God's purpose for us and the call to, serve, to love and serve God in all our life and work. Christ has many services to be done. Some are easy, others are difficult. Some bring honour, others bring reproach. Some are suitable to our natural inclinations and material interests. Others are contrary to both. In some we may please Christ and please ourselves. In others we cannot please Christ except by denying ourselves. Yet the power to do all these things is given to us in Christ who strengthens us. Therefore, let us make this covenant of God our own. Let us give ourselves to him, trusting in his promises and relying on his grace. Eternal God, in your faithful and enduring love, you call us to share in your gracious covenant in Jesus Christ. In obedience we hear and accept your commands. In love we seek to do your perfect will. With joy we offer ourselves anew to you. We are no longer our own but yours. Here's the covenant prayer. Please join in with me as you feel that you are able to do. I am no longer my own, but yours. Your will, not mine, be done in all things. Wherever you may place me. In all that I do and in all that I may endure. When there is work for me and when there is none. When I am troubled and when I am at peace. Your will be done when I am valued and when I am disregarded. When I find fulfilment and when it is lacking. When I have all things and when I have nothing. I willingly offer all I have and am to serve you, as and where you choose. Glorious and blessed God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, you are mine and I am yours. May it be so forever. Let this covenant, now made on earth, be fulfilled in heaven. Amen. And so we pray. Lord, having prayed that deep covenant prayer, we come to you with a sense of awe with what we have just said. wondering at the start of this new year if we'll be able to keep it up. Wondering just what might be the implications of it. And then we remember just who you are. That your word reveals you to be a God of faithfulness. A God who calls people together 
and then sends them out to speak of and to demonstrate your love. And we pray, Lord, that your church might be a faithful witness to your love. That the words of that covenant prayer might be something which characterises your church worldwide. The desperate yearning to do your will, to walk in your way, to be your people. We pray for our church and the other churches around us in Matlock. That you would help us to learn to work together well. That you would help us to, to learn how to worship and and be in unity so that we might present a united witness to the people of Matlock. As we remember the church worldwide, we pray that in word and action People may see your glory, Lord, through the church. We pray for the leaders of the nations. We think of Joe Biden, who will shortly be sworn in as President of the United States. We think of our own government and those in the European Union as they learn to, to do things differently. All these people, Lord, may they act justly and guide wisely. We pray for those pushed to the margins of society Thinking of the different people who went to visit the infant Jesus. The different gifts that they had to offer. We pray that gifts of each and every person may be made welcome. And we pray for those in need. Especially today we give thanks that a number of our friends are receiving the COVID-19 vaccine. And we pray for those we know who are suffering from the effects of that virus at the moment. Ask for your blessing upon them. At the start of a new term we pray for head teachers, teachers and children returning to school. We hear the debates raging about whether children should return to school, when they should return, what it might be like. We know all this will cause a lot of stress and distress to all those involved. Lord, we pray for wisdom, for guidance, for practical help. Today, as we live under restrictions of tier four for 
for our own protection and for those of everyone. We remember especially people living on their own. People living with illness and worried about how they will manage. We know there are people who will feel very isolated and very lonely. We pray they would know your companionship, O oh God. And that there might be people around who would lend a helping hand. And we thank you for the voluntary organisations that already do that. We pray for those living with domestic violence. Which we hear from the news has increased so much. It's something that I hope none of us really understand. But we offer our prayers for these people, for both the victims and the perpetrators. And we pray for all those, lastly, who, are, who have other medical problems than COVID-19. And for those who have had heart attacks and strokes and other medical problems that they might not hesitate to seek medical help and that they would indeed be helped Lord God in the midst of all the stress and distress that we know is is around um, in the medical profession at the moment for all these folks, Lord, and more, we pray. And we don't forget ourselves, Lord, that in these days of again being exiled from our church, we would know your presence beside us, your love within us, your purposes each day. And we end our days by uh, our prayers by sharing in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And so we end worship this morning by saying the blessing. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you everybody for sharing in worship this morning. Look forward to being with you again soon and the service next week will be led by our Superintendent Minister, Robert Foster. God bless you, have a good and safe week and see you soon. Bye bye.